Welcome back everyone for today's video which is on me going back to a popular photo of mine from five years ago and remastering it five years later. This is the image that we're working on today and originally five years ago this photo was done as an HDR or high dynamic range edit. So it was three different frames of the same composition, but just taken at different exposure intervals to expose for the highlights and the shadows and having a neutral image and then combining all three of those frames to balance out the highlights and the shadows across the image. Now within that five year span, I decided to discontinue doing HDR because the cameras that we use are so great and the sensors are so great from them, there's no need to do HDR. I can actually get the same results just from one single image. That original HDR edit, we're actually going to try and get a look that's very, very similar to that frame five years later. With all of that said, let's just get right into it. So the first thing that I want to do is we're, we're gonna go down and adjust our white balance a little bit here go a little bit cooler there we go come off a little bit of the purple tint there and then we'll come down to our highlights and we want to bring those down just to bring in the detail a little bit that's outside the windows and then for our shadows we're gonna push that all the way up now i know this might look a little messy right now but i promise you we're going to bring it all home. So the black levels will darken that a bit. Our texture and exposure will increase both of those about 40%. So next we'll come down to my favorite part, which is a tone curve, which I really think makes or breaks your photo. So I'm actually going to select the point curve here and choose one of the presets that I have here, the skyline curve strong. So we're gonna set that and then just bring our sliders a little bit down here and then increase this one ever so slightly there. And then I also wanna bring up my shadows here as well. Go about 75% or so. And then increase a little bit in my dark level. Now I want you all to actually make sense of where we're going with this photo. So what I'm going to do is actually skip down a bit. I'm actually going to come down to my effects to apply our vignette early. Sometimes I actually will wait to the end, but it just depends on the photo that I'm that I'm editing. So we're actually gonna start that, bring that down, and then bring our midpoint all the way in. And then we want to feather that all the way to 100, as well as bring our highlights up to bring in the, the lights and the sky, because we, we don't want that to be affected by our vignette there. And now I'll also do some adjustments in my calibration. So I'll increase my reds here to about 22. My green hue go up about 40. And then my blue, I'm actually going to take that down to about negative 15. Also do the same in the saturation of it. And we're going to actually bring the saturation down in the gr green primary as well to about 25. Okay, so now let's go back up to our HSL. So here I want to dial down my yellow tone or not dial it down, but kind of change the actual hue of the yellow tone. And we'll go to about 50% on that. Change a little bit of our magenta and purple hues that we might have in the photo there. For our blue tones, we'll actually dial them down a bit to about 14, that, that should work. Our aqua will increase slightly. Greens, increase that ever so slightly as well. And maybe a little bit of a push here as well on our reds and our orange. Now, sometimes um, someone mentioned in a comment on an earlier video, as far as, you know, going up maybe 4% or nine or whatever, you might not really see any differences, but trust me, the differences are there. It's just, you all probably can't see them across the screen, but my detailed eyes, yes, I, I see things changing. So next our saturation will bring to about negative 10. Our orange will actually increase that a bit about quite a bit to about 30 40 around in that range our green will push a little bit increase a little bit of our aquas now we're actually going to desaturate any of our blue purple and magenta colors so i'm actually going to dial those down to 60 percent for both and do the same for magenta colors 
because I want it to lose some of the blue that you kind of saw here coming through the train and outside of the train in the sky area. And we actually might come back off a little bit more. Okay, that works. And then for our luminance, we wanna dial back a little bit on our red, increase the orange a bit, and we'll dial down the purple and magenta colors here. So another one of my favorite parts that we'll come down to is our split toning. I want to add a little bit of warmth here. So we'll get that started by changing our saturation a bit, go about 20 or so percent. We'll go to a more warmer tone color, which is about 50 or so. And look at that, see how we're getting our photo to where we want it now. See how everything is making sense now? I know at the start it probably didn't make sense to people, but now we're bringing it all home. So we'll do the same in our shadows as well. Go to our warmer tone and then ever so slightly increase that a bit. Now for this, I don't wanna go too far like I did with the hue. And I want to come down a little bit off of that. Okay, that looks really good. Let's see, do we want to adjust our balance a little bit? Let's see how that looks. I actually might go to about maybe a negative 10. That works. And then we'll come down to detail. And so I love adding sharpness to my photos. So I will actually add quite a bit here and then I'll mask it. So for some of the parts of the image that might not be entirely in focus, it's not going to sharpen those areas. So that's why I will use the masking. And then for noise reduction, eh, don't really have to do that. We were at ISO 500, that was pretty good. So we don't have to worry about that. And then we'll come down to our lens correction. Now, usually I will keep the vignetting on with whatever lens that I'm shooting instead of running the correction. If I did that, it darkens it way too much. And for this photo, I don't want to do that. So that's how come we're actually going to leave the correction on. We'll go down to our transform tool. And what I want to do is kind of level up these lines. You see how it's kind of slanted a bit? We want to straighten that up in our remastered photo. So I'll actually go to level. And so we, we got it leveled. And now I wanna get these lines straight. We'll actually increase our vertical, vertical line there and get it to a point that it looks pretty okay. I wanna line it up with this railing because that's what's there in the middle. That looks pretty good. So as you can see with doing that, we get like this little white space that's around the top. So what we wanna do is click on Constrain Crop and then that just brings it in and takes away that area. And I think that's pretty good right there for Lightroom. What I'm going to do is export this. We're gonna export with previous because we already have our folder selected. And so it's going to save to my hard drive and then we'll bring it over into Photoshop. Now we're over in Photoshop and we're going to do our final adjustments here. Of course, something that I love doing and it's it's really unnecessary, but I just love doing it and that's adding a lens flare. So we're going to actually do that in our remastered photo here. And I'm going to put it over here in this window because I like that direction that the light's coming from. And I'm, I'm gonna dial it back a little bit because I don't want it to be so intrusive in our photo. So we'll click on that. So once we have that, we'll actually go back up to edit and click on undo the lens flare. We'll go to layer. I wanna add a fill layer, a solid color, and make sure that it's selected with the black color, which it is. And then we'll go back to our lens flare and recall that in our filter, click on lens flare. And then we'll go and add a blur, the Gaussian blur. We'll go to 55 pixels for that. So once we do that, make sure our layer is still selected and come over to where it has normal and go down to screen. And then next, we want to still have that layer selected where it has opacity. We want to change it from 100 and bring it down to, you know, maybe 70% or so. I think that looks pretty good, maybe 65. All right, once we have that, I'll flatten the image and then continue on. Now, I want to maybe bring out a little bit of my, my shoes here. So we'll actually use our dodge tool, make sure our midtones are selected. And I'll just kind of glide over here a bit and bring that in. And I might wanna bring in a little bit of this in some of the dark areas. Oh, didn't mean to do that though. <laughs> First time that's ever happened. So we'll just bring in a little bit of that. Okay, looks good. And last we'll go up to image, adjustments, levels. So here I have many different presets for my levels here in Photoshop. I'm just adding kind of a final touch of 
of contrast and sometimes highlights as well. Let's see what we like here. I think I might want to go with my custom eight, which adds a little bit in the highlights and then just a little bit of more deepness in our darker contrast shadowed areas. So I think I like that. That works pretty good. And I think we're done. We can save this photo and we'll save it as a JPEG. There we have it. Do okay. And that's it. There's our remastered photo, remastering my, my HDR original from five years ago. And now we have our 2020 remaster. So hopefully this video was helpful for you all and looking back at one of my photos. So until next time, I'll see you all in the next video.